Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to thank you for uh, coming out on this wet and windy evening. My name's James Berry. And as I'm sure many of you will have already known, I plied the trade of executioner for eight years until I finally saw the uh, error of my ways and found that I could no longer look into the eyes of those poor wretches upon whom it was my bounden duty to exact the full penalty of the law. Mark my words well, ladies and gentlemen. The duties that I performed were those of executioner, never hangman. Keys. I know you're up there. You should be ashamed of yourself. Not only ruining the good name of one of my servants, but doing so under my roof and under my very nose. Leave go, Lizzie. I can't be found here. My reputation's at stake. What about my reputation? You go oh. down and talk to her. I'll try and slip away somehow. Elizabeth. I want you to bring him down to me. But, Mum... No buts, Elizabeth. Your continued employment here hangs by a thread. Do you think I care about my employment? You dreadful old harridan. Sack me if you must. Mr Templar will look after me. Lizzie! Oh, no, Elizabeth. Not Mr Templar. How could you? Can we not discuss this in another room? We'll wake the household. There is nothing to discuss. You have abused my hospitality and brought the good name of my house into ill repute. Get out of my house. Miss Keys. Forget Liz. Reggie. No one will listen to her. They'll say she's raving. Lizzie, be quiet. Surprise, Mr. Lee We'll creep in behind his eyes And with his eyes we will see Wherever he goes to be close behind 
you don't know is I'm going to jumble these around a bit so that we do not know which position any one of them is in. And then I want you to take hold of just one of those strings and pull it out for me. That's it, OK? Which one have you got? Number one. Number one, ladies and gentlemen. So it is noose number one that tonight will go onto the gallows. We are going to place noose number one onto the gallows while we say goodbye to Donna. Give another round of applause. That was wonderful. Thank you, Donna. Do be careful down the stairs. I was only joking about having any insurance. There we are. Marvellous. All right, Mr. Lee. Turn to face your audience. Place your head through the noose, if you would, sir. All right, we will just recap where we're at. Donna had a free choice of the nooses. Wherever she put them was entirely up to her. She then picked freely from the luggage labels. And it gave us that noose on the gallows. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now I want you to help me out with this. Because remember, if it all goes wrong, I want to introduce you to the idea of corporate responsibility. <laughs> if you take part in the countdown, then you're as guilty of this as I am. So we're going to have a countdown from five to one. But first, we have a little bit of atmosphere. Can we have a drum roll, please? Five, four, three, two, and a list. It occurs to me that if this all goes horribly wrong, Mr. Lee is not going to listen or indeed be able to hear the applause which he so richly deserves. So let's give him that applause now. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lee! That's enough! We don't want it to go to his head. Drum roll again! Five, four, three, Two, one! Whatever it was that kept them all silent to the grave and meant that John Lee had the strength to face the gallows, it's given rise to the greatest clutch of rumours, superstitions and conspiracy theories of any case in British legal history. Except perhaps for Jack the Ripper. Now there's a story James Berry could tell you something about. <laughs> if you bought him a drink first, of course. <laughs> well, he was the devil tries. It's doggy dog, the strongest shall survive.